have in the house a voice. A servant of God who doesn't need any introduction in this house. Is the founder of the Fountain Gate Chapel International. The president of the Love Revolution. A writer, a teacher, a revivalist. Brothers and sisters, let's make welcome and let's receive the ministry of one of the precious sons of the Archbishop, Reverend Eastwood Anaba. your life. Amen, amen, amen. We thank God for today and bless God for the opportunity to be in church. It's not everybody who gets this opportunity. Um, sometimes things happen and people are not able to go to church. So we should thank God that we are able to be here this morning and thanking God for the life of Papa, the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. And of course, Lady Rosa, for what they do for the body of Christ. Um, it's good to know that God has given us a man in this nation and a woman who represent everything good and everything glorious. We want to thank him and bless God for his life. For Yep, come on, we can do that. We can do that. We just thank God for him. We just thank God for him. We just thank God for him. And um, this morning, I want to be speaking briefly to us. Um, for this house, bringing you the awareness on spiritual warfare is nothing new because um, from this house, we know how to fight and fight well. And this morning, I'll give you the opportunity to pray and then fight a little bit, and then we get out of here. But I want you, if you have your Bible with you, to turn with me to the book of um, Jeremiah, chapter 15, and the verse number 1 to 3. Jeremiah, chapter 15, from verse 1 to 3. The Bible said, Then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward these people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. And it shall come to pass, if they say unto thee, Whither shall we go forth? Then thou shalt say to them, Thus saith the Lord, Search us, are for death to death. Such are for us are for the sword to the sword. Such as are for farming to farming. And they that are for captivity to captivity. And I will appoint over them four kinds, saith the Lord, the sword to slay, and the dogs to tear, and the fowls of the heaven, and the beasts of the earth to devour and to destroy. I'm preaching a message I call four kinds of destroyers. Four kinds of destroyers. The Bible said that in John 10.10, 10, it said, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So we see a pattern of four over there. The devil comes, number one, he steals, number two, he kills, number three, and then he destroys, number four. The devil uses... Um, this figure four, or the number four, 
in warfare a lot. And when you look in the Bible, you will see the occurrence of four, and it's so common, I would not like to go into it because it will take us a long time to go into the occurrence of four in the Bible. But suffice it to say that four is a number that represents the name of God because if you were to take Yahweh and to take Jehovah, if you remove the vowels, you'll be left with four letters each, both for Yahweh and for Jehovah. So four represents the name of God himself. So four is the number for God, is the number for God's creation. If you look in creation, it's very easy to see four. Then you see this figure four, and it keeps occurring in spiritual things. I will take you through some dimensions of it as we go along. Now, here is a prophet by the name of Jeremiah. And Jeremiah was an intercessor who used to intercede for the people of God. They misbehave against God. God takes them into captivity. They cry out to him. And then Jeremiah will have to go and pray. Jeremiah and other prophets will have to go and pray. And then God has mercy. And God will deliver um, Judah. God will deliver Israel. And they will backslide again. Now you read Jeremiah chapter 14 and the verse number 11 to 12 and it says something. God is speaking and he said, The Lord said unto me, Pray not for these people, for they are good. It's not everybody you can pray for. You know, there are times somebody will bring you an issue and you hear the Lord is telling you clearly, don't pray for the person. It's not everybody you can pray for. So God is telling Jeremiah, don't pray for these people. Then verse number 12, he says, when they fast, I will not hear their cry. And when they offer burnt offerings and an oblation, I will not accept them, but I will consume them by the sword and by farming and by pestilence. Then you come to Jeremiah chapter 15 and the verse number 1 to 3, and he said, then said the Lord unto me, though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward these people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. So now God is saying that, Jeremiah, if you prayed for these people, I will not answer your prayer. And he said, even a man like Moses, if he stood in front of me and prayed, I will not listen. And Samuel, I will not listen. Now what this thing tells me is that there are people on earth who when they pray, it is different from the rest of us. Jeremiah's prayer is different. And then, um, what is the name? Moses' prayer is different. And then Samuel's prayer is different. You know, yesterday there was um, something I was discussing with somebody. I, I've forgotten who the person is. And I told the person, um, I have to be here this morning. You know, um, I was summoned to be here, I think, two days ago or something. I was just told I have to appear here. Somebody said, who told you? There can only be one person. So don't even ask me that. So <laughs> I was summoned to be here. But I was supposed to do something this morning. And I cut this short. And I was running away. And they said, so where are you going? I said, I'm going somewhere. But you know, there are some people, you don't want them to pray against you or pray about you. You, you don't even want to be their prayer topic. Uh, I will advise you, don't be their prayer topic. I remember several years ago, I was in Archbishop's. Um, I used to live in Papa's house. Anytime I came from Borga to come and, to come to Accra, and uh, I would live in the house. One day I heard him praying some prayers. Those were the days, and um, some of the some some other pastors were here. So I heard him praying some prayers, and I said, "What prayers are these?" He comes against something and something. Let them be cut off. Let them. I said, "Hey, and by the way, you don't want to go near this." No, you don't, want to, you don't want to mess up around this kind of thing. So, but God is saying that Moses and Samuel, even if they stood in front of me here, I will not listen. But the encouragement about this thing is that people, it means that whenever you stand before God and pray, God hears. God hears prayer. And he said, it shall come to pass, if they ask, where are we going? Say to them, those that are for death, number one, to death. 
Those that are for the sword, number two to the sword. Those that are for farming, number three to farming. And those that are for captivity to captivity. That is a pattern of four. Now, I told you that four is the number of God. Four also represents um, God's creation. So you have all this about north, south, east, and west. And then you talk about the winter. You talk about summer. You talk about autumn. You talk about spring. You see four occurs a lot in God's creation. In the Garden of Eden, four, ga four rivers, four river heads in the Garden of Eden. And the material world was created on the, the, the completion of the material world was on the fourth day of creation. When God created the sun and the moon and the stars, okay? And the, the fourth commandment is the commandment of the Shabbat. When God said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So four stands as something that is for creation, something that is for God, the well-being of a human being, that when God wants to bless a human being, he just uses this number four for perfection, completion, creation, the, the, the power of God for creation, God's name. Now, so the devil also uses that number four when he's electing agents or he's appointing situations to destroy. Now, you see that God in the verse number three uses some four elements or agencies of destruction. He said, and I will cause them, I beg your pardon, and I will appoint over them four kinds. I will appoint over them four kinds, saith the Lord. The sword to slay, the dogs to tear, the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the earth to devour and to destroy. This first service, I'm going to talk about the sword and the dogs. And in the second assembly, I'll be talking about the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the earth. So for those of you that are in the, this assembly, look for the tape of the second one. And the second one, they will have to listen to what I'm going to tell you now. But God is talking about four agents of destruction that he's going to bring against the people of Jerusalem. He's going to bring these against them because they have sinned against him and they have done evil. What the devil does is that when the devil moves, he moves by using counterfeit sometimes. So God does this and the devil creates a counterfeit. At times too, what the devil uses, that what God uses, the devil mimics it. So he will produce a replica, a, co a, a copy of it. So when God says, I will bring against Jerusalem, I will bring against them the sword, and I'll bring against them the dogs, and I'll bring against them the beast, and I'll bring against them the fowls of the heavens. The devil also uses the same to attack us. Okay? So the devil uses the same for to attack God's people. Um, you will notice that four occurs a lot in spiritual warfare. For example, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, number one, against powers, number two, against the rulers of darkness of this world, number three, and against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, number four. Then Jesus said, I give unto you power to tread on serpents, one, scorpions, number two, I give unto you power to tread on serpents, scorpions, all the power of the enemy. And then nothing shall by any means hurt you. And don't make a mistake about this. That word nothing does not mean nothing. That word nothing means nothing. That means that the things that are not named, the things that you have not seen, the things that are in the world to come, powers and forces that are unheard of. That is the word nothing. So over there we see four again. And then you read in Joel chapter 1 and the verse number 4, and it says, that which the locust has left, the palmer worm, that which the palmer worm has left, the locust have eaten, 
that which the locusts have left, the cankerworm have eaten, and that which the cankerworm has eaten, has left, the caterpillar has eaten. So over there again, we see four. But in Jeremiah chapter 15, the verse number three, we are seeing four kinds of agencies that the devil uses to destroy. But over here, of course, he's saying God will bring them against the people of Jer Jerusalem. But I, I'm just telling you, it is the same four that the enemy will use or the devil will use against any group of people he wants to destroy. Number one is the sword. Number two is the dogs. Number three is the fowls of the heaven. And then number four is the beast of the earth. Let's start with the sword to destroy. Now, you notice that Three of them are animals, the dogs, the fowls of the heaven, and the beasts of the earth. Those are animals. But the sword is not an animal. The sword in the Hebrew is herev. And it stands as a symbol of judgment and violence. And it is a, a metallic weapon that people use for war. But the word actually means drought. It means desolate. It means to destroy. It means to decay. It means to dry up. It means to slay. And it also means to kill. Okay. Now, the other three are dogs, fowls of the heaven, and the beast of the earth. But the sword is an object you use to fight. Ne nevertheless, I've never seen a sword which is walking about in town killing people, flying in the air. It is human beings that use the sword. So actually, when God says the sword, God is talking about a human being behind the sword. And of all the evil, yeah, you can do that, you can clap. Bishop James Sao says free of charge. Now, of all the four that are listed, the human being is the most dangerous of beasts. If you want the most dangerous of animals, don't look for a lion, a tiger, snake. No, human beings. We are behind all the swords. We are behind all the bombs. We are behind all the traps. We are behind all the witchcrafts and the divinations and the enchantments. So he said, the human being wielding the sword to destroy. Now there was a man in the Bible by the name of Job. And in Job chapter 1, from the verse number 13, something happened in the life of Job. Job's children went to eat and to drink in their elder brother's house. And while they were eating and drinking, the Bible said that a man ran out of the place where they were eating and drinking. I'm reading from verse 13 to 22, so keep the pace with me. And when they were eating and drinking, a man ran from the, from the, from the field and came to Job and said that the asses and the oxen were plowing and they were moving together. And then... The Sabians fell on them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped to come and tell you. The Sabians fell on them. They've taken the asses away. They've taken the, the oxen away. They've slain the people. Out. They've slain your servants with the sword. I'm the only one left. And whilst he was just speaking, there came another and said, the fire of heaven, the fire of God fell from heaven and has burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped to come and tell you. And whilst this man was speaking, another one came and said, the Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away. And they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. I only am escaped to come and tell you. That was not all. Whilst he was just speaking, another one came and said, your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. 
And behold, there came a wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell on the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped to come and tell you. Now, you see the pattern of four again. The Chaldeans attacked. The fire of God fell from heaven. The Sabians attacked. And then the wind of God, or the wind from the wilderness, also attacked. And when the wind attacked, it hit the four corners of the tent. I pray that any assignment of the sword against you this morning, we withdraw the sword. We, we command the enemy to withdraw the sword in the name of Jesus. I pray that any sword of the enemy against your servants, against your wife, your children, your husband, we, we divert the sword. We, we command the sword. I like something Jesus told Peter. He said, Peter, take your sword and put it back in the sheath. Put your sword back in the scabbard. Don't use it. We command the enemy to withdraw every sword. May every sword be withdrawn from your life, from your family. Any sword that has been released this morning, we terminate the assignment of the sword in the mighty name of Jesus. We terminate it. And when the enemy releases the sword, the thing that we use against the sword to fight against the sword is the prayer that we pray. The prayer that we pray. Prayer stops the sword from executing its assignment. In Acts chapter 12, the verse number 1 to 5, we are told about how Herod stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Verse number 2, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Verse number 3, and because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then the days were the days of the... Then were the days of the, of the unliving bread, okay? Then, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Verse number five. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And we know that later on, Peter was freed. The angel of the Lord came to, on the scene and freed the man of God. We pray in Jesus' name that as we pray, any sword that is intended against you, may God send this angel to deliver any man, any woman under the sound of my voice today who is a target of a sword. If you can scream the loudest scream, you are releasing some power upon your life. So he said, I will appoint over them four kinds, the sword to slay. But there is this interesting character. There is this interesting character called the dog. The dog. The dogs to tear. The dogs to tear. I want to get out of our way quickly and then we'll pray. The dogs to tear. That is the second one. That word dog is the word Kelev, and it means to attack. It means to attack. And when you see it in the Bible, it is used of a person of low status. A person of low status. It is used for a male prostitute. It is a symbol for uncleanness, profanity, gluttony, scavengery. That is what the dog represents. And it represents also distraction. Now you look in the Bible, and the Bible has many things to say about, about, about the dog. The, the dog is a very interesting thing. I went and preached about a dog somewhere, and when I finished, one of my daughters went to her house, she had a dog, and she drove the dog away. She said, you are evil. The pastor says you are evil. I've driven you away. Now, I'm not saying go and drive away your dog. I have dogs in our house, okay? We have dogs in our house, and dogs are my friends. I, I carry them. I, I play with them. They, 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 yeah, you know, I talk with them. I have conversation with them, you know, and things like that. So don't go and throw your dog away. Now, the animals I have in our house, I talk to them. Um, I remember we had a, a cat, and the cat became pregnant. But there was no male cat in the house. So I had to ask this cat, who impregnated you? 
And I, I went and I, I told the cat, I, I, I carried the cat, I put the cat on my, my shoulder and I said, so the cat's name is Bridget, okay? So we call that cat Bridget. I said, Bridget, who impregnated you? You have to tell me because there's no male cat in the house. So how did you become pregnant? Where, where, where did you go? I was here. Multi. Where did you go? You know, so I, I talked to the cat. The cat never disclosed. But she went on ahead and had the little ones and so on and so forth. Then, you know, I talked to, I talked to animals. Then I have these small fishes. One of our daughters too from Kumasi brought us two small fishes. And they put them in this little aquarium in one of the living areas. And then, then one day, something happened, and then one of them um, fell out of the water. I don't know whether she, he jumped, whether it's a he or she jumped out of the water, fell down, died, and it was left of one. So I came home and I asked, where is the other small fish? They said she jumped out and then fell it it jumped out let's use it 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 will be safer so it jumped out and fell and died so i i went to the second one that was left i said i want to advise you your sister died because your sister jumped out of the water i want to warn you don't jump out of this water because if you jump out of the water you are also going to die and and i was very serious about talking to the fish now I'm telling you this so that you don't go and drive away all the animals from your house because you are saying they are evil. Okay? Now, but the dog is a mystery animal. You read your Bible in um, Revelation chapter 22 and the verse number 15, and it talks about the dog. And it said, but without the city are the dogs, the sorcerers, the whoremongers, the murderers, the idolaters, and whosoever love it and make it a lie when we speak about these animals sometimes it is the devil behaving like an animal sometimes too it is human beings with animal instincts there are some human beings in this world they and animals there is no difference so in philippians chapter 3 and the verse number 2 paul was writing to the philippians he said beware of dogs Beware of evildoers and beware of concision. There are some people in this life, the difference between they and dogs is not clear. That's why I told you that, that word dog can represent many things. Scavengery, profanity, immorality, wickedness, sorcery. Oh, the amount of sorcery that dogs can manifest is amazing. I did a study on the dog and some studies show that it can hear about 100 times, 100,000 times more than a human being can hear. The dog is amazing. The things it can see, it can smell a cancer. A dog can smell a cancer. A dog can smell somebody's mood. Dogs can do so many things. They, they, they can smell somebody's mood. They can, they can, they can. You know, in, in some of you, you grew up in Accra, these nice places, so there are things you don't know about. In my village, when the dog is barking in the night and is barking and barking and barking, the older people will say there is a ghost around the place. They'll tell you that the dog is sensing a ghost. I don't know how they know that. But dogs, dogs are, they have some supernatural spiritual instincts. There are human beings who are like that. Demonic entities too, who are like that. So, the dog. Jesus says something very interesting about dogs. One day he said, don't give that which is holy unto dogs. Neither cast your pearls before the swine. Lest they trample them under feet and after that, they turn around to hurt you. We have human beings around us who sometimes the difference between they and dogs. These are human beings. You give them something and they will use it against you. 
You give them money and they use it against you. You give them food, they use it against you. You give them clothing, they will use it against you. Give them opportunities, they will use it against you because they don't know something that's holy. Introduce your wife to them, they will chase your wife. Introduce your husband to them, they will chase your husband. You introduce your teenage daughter to them and the following day, although they are 67 years old, they will start pursuing your 19-year-old girl. These are dangerous elements. Don't take that which is holy and give it to dogs. And we do it all the time. We do it all the time. And, and he said, don't cast your pearls before the swine. One day Jesus had an encounter with a Syrophoenician woman. The woman came to Jesus and wanted healing for her daughter. And Jesus said, it is not meet for me to take the children's bread and give it unto dogs. And the woman said, but the dogs stay at the table, under the table, and they eat the crumbs that fall from under the table. People, there is a strange thing that is going on in the world, some strange things. There are, there are two. The believers are taking that which is holy and they are giving it to dogs. How? Christians are marrying unbelievers. Listen, we, we marry unbelievers all the time. Our brothers are marrying unbelievers, witches and wizards. Our sisters are marrying wizards. All kinds of things. We, we bless marriages between unbelievers and believers all the time in the church. We are giving that, we, we are mixing up things. It, it's a generation of mixture. Yesterday I was supposed to, I was, I was going somewhere in the morning. I, I felt a little tired and I, I didn't want to go. And the place they wanted me to go and do something. I, I told them, I said, I beg them, they should, they, should, they should let me, they should just let me keep myself. I, I told them, I said, please, don't let me go and mingle my oil. Don't, don't let me go and mix my oil. Because, you know, sometimes we mix the oil. You know, we are like these people who used to be in the, in the when we were in, um, in, in some of the communities we used to stay. There were these people who were, they were foreigners. Most of them were foreigners, but they lived in Ghana. And they sell kerosene, petrol, diesel, oil. They mix up all of them and they sell them a little year, a little year. And when you come, they can give them to you in milk containers. They can give you a milo container full. They can give you a, a gallon full if you want. And they mingle all kinds of oil. These days in the church, we mingle all kinds of things. We, we give holy things onto dogs. And, and, and it's almost like a curse has fallen on us. The thing is like a curse. And, and we, we do all these mixtures. We mingle the oil. Just like some people do mixed wine. We mingle. Cocktail of anointings. Cocktails of personalities. He said, um, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That is what we do. You see somebody filled with the Holy Ghost, born again, tongue talking, and the person intentionally goes to enter alliance with demonic people. In the name of we are doing business, in the name of we are married, in the name of we are doing this. You know, we don't respect the sanctity of boundaries anymore. We take that which is holy and we give it to dogs. We lay hands on anybody. You know, we lay hands on magicians. I, I, I have had times when I have to pray over somebody and you just touch the person's hand and you know that Aquaya Dindro serious. No, the, you can hold the hand and you can see you are holding lead. I mean, these hands are heavy because they have been they have been steeped into things. So don't give that which is holy unto dogs. Otherwise, they will turn around and hurt you. And Jesus said, Don't take the children's bread and give it to dogs. The devil has taken away the children's bread, all the prosperity, all the blessing, all the good things in life. Satan has taken them from us and given it unto dogs. So God is saying to the people of Jerusalem, I will bring against you the sword. Human beings 
who have wickedness and that can slay and that can destroy. And they will come and attack you. And then I will also bring against you the dogs. And these dogs will tear and the dogs will devour. There was a prophecy against Jezebel. And God spoke through the prophet Elijah. He said, Jezebel, you will not die a natural death. In the field of Jezreel, where you killed Naboth and took his vineyard, you will be destroyed in the same place. And the dogs will eat you up. Jezebel truly died because her own soldiers took her and threw, her own eunuchs took her and threw her down. She died and by the time Jehu said, go and pick up the woman and bury her because she's the daughter of a king. By that time, the dogs have eaten up her body already. I pray that God will not give your body as a prey to dogs. May God not give your body as a prey to dogs. And, and, and this is where, this is where the, another thing about the dogs coming, the Bible said a man like Stephen, when he died, the Bible said that it was devout men that carried his body to go and bury it. Now, some believers die and dogs go and bury them. Excuse me the use of that word dog because it's a very dangerous word to use. But a believer dies and sometimes unbelievers carry them and do all kinds of things to them. They tell them, no, I remember I went to this funeral and they told me, they said, you know what, we want you to only preach but you will not see where they, we bury him. Because because of the tradition, this man must be buried at a certain time of the night and they must bury him at a place where you, the pastor, will not see. I said, I will not preach. I don't do mixed oil. I'm not preaching. I refuse to preach. Another pastor went and preached anyway because there are pastors who have no taboos. Everything goes, with, everything goes for them. But I refuse to do it anyway. But you know, people, I pray that the day you die, strange people will not come for your body. I, 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 I tell my wife that the greatest legacy my father left for me is that this man was an idol worshiper who got converted in his 70s. And, and he followed Christ throughout his life. And when my dad passed, I was waiting to see whether any idol worshippers will appear and say this body is theirs. None of them appeared. Of course, they know, the, they know his son. That not, not, when, no, no, I mean, they, no, you, you come and see what you don't want. No, nobody stepped there. And I told my wife, I said, praise the Lord. My mom passed, nobody came. We did it the way we wanted. My wife's dad passed, we did it the way we wanted. Her mother passed, we did it the way we wanted. At least our parents fought the war against scavengers. The Bible said where the carcass is, there the eagles will gather. Our parents fought that war. I pray that those of you that are standing here, Hira Baba, Hira Baba, Hira Baba, Hira Baba, the day you die, there will be no question about who owns your body. That the body of Christ will have access to your funeral, have access to your body, and they will bury your body the right way, but dogs will not eat up your body. He said dogs will eat up your body. And that is exactly what the dogs did to Jezebel's body. Okay? Let me give you the last scripture and I'm done. Psalm 22, the verse number 12 to 21. Psalm 22, the verse number 12 to 21. Many bulls have come past me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round about. And you know, when he talks about these bulls, he's not talking about real bulls. He's talking about demonic entities, principalities and powers. And he's also talking about human beings who have got animal instincts. He calls them bulls. He said, many bulls, they get upon me with their, with their mouths. And as, a ravening, and as a ravening or roaring lion, I am poured out like water. And all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. Verse number 15. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. 
and thou has brought me into the dust of death. The dogs have come past me about. Sometimes you can just see that dogs, people that are unholy, unrighteous, people that are destructive, you can't trust them, full of profanity and evil. The other day, I wrote a note to a certain friend of mine who is a pastor. I told him, I said, sir, these days I feel like being alone. I told him the world has become very evil. I told him, sometimes you, you just feel like you want to run away. You, you feel like you just want to hide somewhere. Because everywhere you pass, there's some kind of evil. I don't know whether you've been there before. John wrote and he said, the whole world lies in darkness. I pray that anybody who is surrounded by dogs in your family, in your business place, sometimes even in the church space, may the Lord deliver you from the sword and from dogs. And the way you deliver yourself from the sword and dogs is number one, prayer. Number two, prophecy. Number three, power. And number four, purity. Everybody say prayer. Everybody say power. Everybody say prophecy. And everybody say purity. They are the things you use to deliver yourself from the dogs. I want somebody to stand to your feet this morning. And I need you to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, deliver me from the sword. Deliver my family from the sword. Deliver us from dogs. Deliver us from dogs. And from beasts. And from strange people with animal instincts and tendencies. This is action. Pray. Pray. Can we sing Emmanuel in the background while they are praying? Emmanuel. Come on, keep praying. They'll be singing Emmanuel in the background.
God, Emmanuel. Come on, pray. We withdraw every sword. We withdraw every sword. Listen. Listen. Let me take these two prayer lines. The other day I was doing a prayer meeting and a gentleman came and he said, that person just died. That person just died. That person just died. That person just died. And she said, they've all died. I'm the only person left. And he said, Pastor, I'm afraid. For such a person, it is likely a sword is in the family. And is slain from one person to the other. There is someone here today who is scared. When we start praying, stand in front here. Number two, so the first thing we are praying is that we are stopping every sword that is moving in our family, every sword that is moving in our ministry, our place of work. A pastor told me recently, he said, Brother Esu, can you come? Just come and pour oil and pray over my church because I don't know what is happening. My leaders and my elders are just dying. And the members are running away from the church. He said, some of them told, tell me, they say, Daddy, we want to come to the church, but we are scared. I come against every sword in your family. Every sword in your business. Every sword in your ministry. And the spirit or any individual with a sword that is just killing and murdering, we ask in the name of Jesus, let every sword, the contract of the sword is terminated in the name of Jesus. Somebody come and scream with the loudest shout and let God touch your life. So that is the first one we are praying. The second one we are praying is that There's only one thing you can do with a dog. If dogs invade your territory, you can either kill the dog or drive away the dogs. Many of us have too many dogs around us. Dogs. Bring up that thing in Deuteronomy, sorry, in Revelation 22, the verse number 15 again. Revelation 22, verse 15. Without our dogs. That means... Dogs are not supposed to be in the city. Many of you don't have the courage to deal with dogs. And notice that in this world, if you are too nice, you may die early. Or you'll be contaminated until you can't express yourself. There is a story about Smith Wigglesworth, that great church father. Oh, father of the revival of the end time. Smith Wigglesworth was sitting in a train and he saw a certain man. This man was coming to sit on the train and a dog was following the man. And the dog's name was Bobby. So the man was telling the dog, Bobby, go back. And the dog was still following him. Bobby, go back. And the dog was still following him. Bobby, go back. And the dog was still following him. He sat in the train and Bobby was trying to come up. And the man shouted, Bobby, go back! And the dog ran. Smith Wigglesworth was sitting in the train. He shouted, that is how to treat the devil. You scream at the devil. You don't keep begging the devil and say, Bobby, go back. Somebody today, you want to drive every dog out of your environment. 
I'm talking about the, the dogs. Now, bring it back. For without our dogs. And I didn't write the Bible. So I don't know where to put the commas and the full stops and the semicolons and so on and so forth. But I'm telling you, if you gave me my own way to punctuate this scripture, I will make it for without our dogs. Color. And I'll consider the sorceress and the whoremongers and the murderers and the idolaters and all those who love and make lies as dogs. Because truly, that is what they are. Every sorcerer is a dog. Because if, if you know the amount of sorcery in dogs, whoremongers, what is more immoral than a dog? Murderers, dogs they can kill. Idolaters, you should see dogs and other kind of animals involved in idolatry. Whosoever loveth and maketh a lie, the dog is the one that can be walking around you and behave very nicely, but the next minute it will bite you. First of all, you are stopping every sword from killing in your family or your place of work. If you are standing there and you know that the destruction is coming close to you, I want you to stand in front here. And if you know that you are surrounded, you are in a company of dogs. Everything around you, you can just see dogs all over the place. Human beings that are intended to just tear you up. You also stand here. We are praying for 10 minutes and I should be done. Do we do this song, peace? Peace. Peace. Um, how do they sing peace? Um, I will worship the Lord for he is something, 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 something. Okay, give me just the instrument for now. Pop, no, let's start. Just the instrumentation. Pop, pam, 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 pam. Come on, scream like your voice is yours and pray. Come on, the intro, we just go with that. Lift up your hands to Jesus. Mm -hmm. It you yami hum crong crong prabe trabe kumem kaino na mi na wu o wu mi na. message I call four kinds of destroyers everybody say four kinds of destroyers and I thank Papa for giving me the opportunity to preach I don't take it lightly this is one of the most serious places you can ever stand in life um, yesterday was um, Saturday I was to go and do something for 
one of our workers in church. He was marrying yesterday, and I couldn't go. I told my wife to go for me, and I didn't get out of my door the whole night, the whole morning into afternoon, except the night when I was going to see somebody off to the left. I couldn't go out because you cannot be preaching in action and you are roaming about a day before. Because, I mean, you are coming to the papa's house. You can't, you can't just get up carelessly and come. You, you know what, people, let me tell you this. Even if you know the message you are preaching, you don't treat your father's pulpit with that kind of disrespect. Just roam about and all of a sudden just appear. Even the body language spiritually will not help you. You know, we disrespect many spiritual things. We disrespect a lot of spiritual things. So that day you have to honor the pulpit by making sure that you stay away a little bit. So that when you come and stand here, you are not careless. Every minute, every minute is maximized. But I'm coming to you with a message I call four kinds. I started it in the, in the, in the, in the first assembly. And let's go back to that scripture, very pivotal scripture for what I'm going to do this morning. Jeremiah chapter 15, the verse number 3. Jeremiah 15 and the verse number 3. And he said, and I will appoint over them four kinds. Say the Lord. The sword to slay, the dogs to tear, the fowls of the heaven, and the beasts of the earth to devour and to destroy. So God is talking about, I would destroy them with four things. Now, the, the number four, there is something we call biblical numerology, or, yeah, biblical numerology, or spiritual numerology. That means, for every number you see in the Bible, it represents something. So three represents something, two represents something, um, five you know represents grace, seven represents completeness, um, maybe eight represents the new beginning, ten represents um, tribulation, and so on and so forth. So you have to get used to when you see numbers, you want to interpret them. So I look at the, the figure four. And figure four is found in the Bible. It, it represents the name of God. If you take the vowels out of the name of God, either Jehovah or Yahweh, you come out with four letters. And then you see the Garden of Eden, and there are four river heads that spring up in, in, in the Garden of Eden, the Euphrates and the Gihon and the Pishon, and then the, the, the what is the, the name of Pishon, Gihon, Euphrates, and there's a fourth one. Don't worry about it. There are four of them there. Then you, you read about north, south, east, and west. And you read about winter. You know about winter, spring, summer, autumn. So you see four almost everywhere. And then you that are sitting here, you look at yourself immediately. You see two hands, two legs. When you combine them, you have four. Okay? So there's something about four, which is a mystery. And it represents the number for God the number for his creating, his power of creation is a number for perfection, is a number for completeness. Now, God uses the figure four to create. The devil uses it to destroy. So the Bible said, the thief cometh not, number one, cometh. But for to steal, stealing is number two. Number three, kill. And number four, destroy. So he comes. He steals, he kills, he destroys. Four. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents, scorpions, over all the power of the enemy. Number four, nothing. And that word nothing, that word nothing does not mean nothing. That word nothing means things that are unnamed, things that are unseen, things that are in the future, things that are yet to come, and you've never heard of them before. Then Joel 1.4 will say, that which the palmer worm has left, the locust has eaten, and that which the locust has left, the canker worm has eaten, and that which the canker worm has left, the caterpillar has also eaten. So that gives you another four. So we see that in spiritual warfare, if you don't understand four, you are going to be in trouble. And four occurs in so many places in the Bible. 
In the book of Job, chapter 1, we see four agents of the enemy attack Job's life and his family and his business. Number one, the Chaldeans attacked them. Number two, the fire of God from heaven fell on them. Number three, the Sabians attacked them. And number four, the wind came from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the tent and, and, and fell on the children. So you see that four also occurred. But then in Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 3, he said, I will appoint over them four kinds. The sword to slay, the dogs to tear, the fowls of the heaven, and the beasts of the earth to devour and to destroy. These are four agents of destruction. Now, all these agents of destruction can represent what they naturally are. Okay? So, naturally, it's a physical sword. Naturally, it's a dog. Naturally, it's a fowl Natu or a bird. Naturally, it's a beast. So you can interpret them naturally. Number two, you can interpret all these things to be spirits. That the sword is a spirit. The dog is a spirit. The fowls of the heaven, they are spirits. And the beasts of the earth, they are spirits. But the other way you can interpret these ones is that all these are also human beings. All these are also human beings. All these are human beings. The sword is a human being behind the sword that destroys. So, and the, the heart of man is desperately wicked and deceitful. And the Bible said, who can tell? Human beings are the most dangerous things you can ever come across. We are very dangerous. So the sword is the first animal you are looking at the human being behind the sword, then human beings who also behave like dogs. Human beings that behave like dogs. So you read your Bible in the book of Revelation, chapter 22 and the verse number 15. Revelation 22 and the verse number 15. And it said, for without are dogs and sorcerers and, and whoremongers and, and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I can tell you immediately that the dogs over here is not referring to real dog, it's referring to human beings. After all, this is talking about the new Jerusalem and there are not going to be physical dogs around the new Jerusalem or outside the new Jerusalem. It's talking about human beings. Human beings that behave like dogs. When Jesus said you don't take the children, the food of the children and give it to dogs, he wasn't talking about real dogs. He was talking about hidden people. And then when he said, cast not your pearls before swine and don't give that which is holy unto dogs, lest they, they trample them underfoot and they turn around and destroy you. He's not talking about real dogs. He's talking about human beings that behave like dogs. Here is Jesus. They came and told him, Herod is looking for you to kill you. He said, go and tell that fox. So he refers to Herod as a fox. Let me tell you these people. That thing in Deuteronomy, sorry, in Revelation chapter 50, chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 22, sorry. Revelation chapter 22 and the verse number 15. Without her dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. If I was permitted to punctuate the Bible, and I know some of you are saying I'm blaspheming, but I want to tell you people, when it came to punctuating the Bible, the Holy Ghost didn't punctuate everything. Um, human beings punctuated. They were translators, and they punctuated. And there are some of them where some of the punctuations are not even right, and so on and so forth. But I will not go into to that in the canonization of the scriptures and what people did in terms of translations. And that is why you read message translation of the Bible and some of the things are written differently from, from, the, from the English Standard Version and some of them are different from the Authorized King James Version and so on and so forth. Let's leave that for another time. But this one, I'm just playing a little game with it. For without our dogs, if I want to see the dog as a human being, then I want to see that the general name for sorceress, 
whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie, I want to see all of them as dogs. So if I was writing this thing in my own notes, and I wrote, and without our dogs, column, two dots, boom, boom, then I list them. These are the dogs. Every sorcerer is a dog. Every whoremonger is a dog. Every murderer is a dog. Every idolater is a dog. And everyone who loveth and maketh a lie is a dog. Let me tell you people, in life, we have human beings that are more dangerous than a sword. Because when they open their mouth, their mouth is like a sword. They can kill you with their mouth. Your heart and reputation, they can destroy it within two weeks of just giving a negative testimony about you. I pray that anybody that has raised the scourge of the tongue, the scourge, the Bible says that the word of God is a two-edged sword. That means human beings, their tongues are like sword. May God deliver you from the tongue of men. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you will condemn it. Come on, scream like your voice is yours and praise you. Human beings and their tongues. They can lash at you with their tongues. They can tell a lie you may never recover. They can generate a rumor you will never recover. They can take a, a scandal and put it on you. You will never recover. But as for you, I declare, a thousand will fall on your side, ten thousand on your right hand. It shall not come near you. The loudest shout has the highest victory. I said the loudest shout has the highest victory. Tongue. The scourge of the tongue. Number two. He said, and the dogs. He said, don't take that which is holy. Cast it, cast, don't cast your pearls before swine. And don't give that which is holy unto dogs. Some of us have been giving that which is holy unto dogs. Sleeping with unbelievers, marrying unbelievers, doing all kinds of stuff. Taking your wisdom, giving it to unbelievers, giving it to dogs. You give to people what they don't deserve and what they don't appreciate. Recently, in the month of August, I was in the city of Sunyani, and the Lord told me, he said, how old are you? And I mentioned my name. He said, henceforth, for you to live a reasonable life, stop giving to people what they don't appreciate. Anything you are giving to somebody, the person must be able to appreciate it. If they don't appreciate, don't give it. Don't give your energy to people who don't appreciate it. Don't give your money to people who don't appreciate it. Don't give your time to people who don't appreciate it. Don't give your body to people who don't appreciate it and who are not holy. He said, don't. Don't give your life he told me, he said, I, I know you are passionate. You want to serve. You want to preach even when you are tired. But he said, if you are not careful, one day you will go somewhere and preach when you are very tired and you may die and the pastor you went to preach for will not even attend your funeral. Then I said, what a stupid way to die. Even if my mother didn't give birth to me, but she spat me out, I cannot die this stupid death. He says, stop giving to people things they don't appreciate. Because you give, to too, you give too many things to people, and they don't even stop to say thank you. He said, that is not humility, that is stupidity. Stupidity is different from humility. I pray that you will learn how to value the things God has given you. He said, I've given you an anointing and the anointing is precious oil. Don't give it to people to trample it underfoot. Don't give it to people to use it and after that, attack it. Uh, look at you. So beautiful a Christian. Do you think that unbeliever is worth sleeping with you and giving you money? So because of money, you sold your body to somebody's husband who is not born again. Even if he's born again, some of these deceptive born again people, 
that, that are claimed to be born again, but they still live their life like dogs, huh? fornicators and adulteresses, whoremongers in the house of God, who fornicate and commit adultery and come back and take the communion at the Lord's table. Maya Kablando Liski Mi Antaba, Deni Maswani Me Kibiyaka Takabashanda Maha. Somebody shouting is not a fornicator. Somebody shouting is not an adulterer. Somebody shouting is not a whoremonger. Somebody shouting is not a murderer. And those, oh, Papa is in the house. Papa is in the house. And Papa is in the house. And, and I want to thank him for sitting there. I want to thank him for sitting at the back. Because if he's around here in the front, he'll intimidate you. When the man who led you to Christ and ordained you sitting in a church and you have to preach, it can be very intimidating. But Papa, I will try. If you mark my notes and you give me even 40%, I will appreciate Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So my professor is in the house and you should bet, better give a bigger club offering and thank God. You know, you know, the, the Archbishop has done so many things in my life. And let me tell you the first one. The first time I came to preach in action, he told me, come and preach. I said, hey, me. Okay? So I came and I preached. And my first sermon in action was the challenge of Jabez. I never forget it. No, I don't forget because that was my first sermon. This is the only church where I remember my first sermon. I don't remember my first sermon in Fountain Gate Chapel or anywhere. This is the, and that's because the sleepless nights you go through before you preach that sermon, you will never forget. They say, type the Leviathan and you will do no more. So, that day I finished preaching and when I finished, when I got to the end, you know, I was a young man and my memory was very sharp. I quoted the whole of Isaiah 60 verbatim without looking in the Bible. I quoted the whole of Isaiah 60. And when I was quoting it, Papa was sitting on my back and he, you know the way he does it. Hmm. 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 And before long, he started tongues. Yakataba. I said, hey, he didn't know what was in my head. But the more he responded, the, the more I fired. When I finished, he now took the microphone and said, okay, his food is going to Borgatanga. And he will be back next two weeks from Wednesday to Sunday. Revival. Wednesday to Sunday, revival. I said, God has called me. No argument. God has called me. That was the first one. Then one day, too, we were doing the action convention at Trade Fair. That was the time I came and preached some dangerous messages. Sound and men. Sound and alarm. And I made people blow trumpet in the church. Sound and alarm. Sound and men. Sound and men. Sound and something. One day, I preached for nearly two hours. When I finished, I was going to sit down. Papa pushed me. He said, Isu, you have not finished. Go and continue. Go and continue. That particular convention, some people got so agitated about the things I preached. After I left, they came to Archbishop. They said they wanted the tapes, and they refused to give them the tape. You know, maybe he has forgotten, but it was a very hot one. I mean, very contentious. Those were the things I could preach. Those were the days I could preach things like Aholiba, Ahola, and Aholiba. I could preach women and men get running stomach. You have to go to the washroom and return to come and continue. But we thank God for his presence in the house and come on, acknowledge him again. Thank you. Now, so the dogs. Now, let's look at the fowls of the air. Fowls of the air. He said, where the carcass is, there the eagles will gather. So when the church of Jesus Christ is dead, then vultures will come into the church. And I can tell you today, there are many vultures in the church. When Jesus said, where the carcass is, there the eagles will gather, he was talking about the Jerusalem, Jerusalem becoming apostate. And when Jerusalem becomes apostate, the vultures, that is the Roman army, will invade the place. So where the carcass is, the eagles gather. And I tell you people, the, there are too many carcass in the church. Dead bodies and corpses. 
So it's talking about the birds of the air. And these birds of the air, for those of you who sometimes dream and you see birds and all kinds of strange things, some birds in life, when you see them in your dreams, you have to get worried. One of them is an owl. 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 Owl, they spell it, um, what is the spelling of an owl? O-W-L. O-W-L. Jeremiah chapter 50 and the verse number 39 and 40. It says something about the owl. Jeremiah 50, verse 39 and 40. About the owl. He said, and the owls shall dwell. Therefore, the wild beast of the desert with the with the wild beast of the island shall dwell there, and the owls shall dwell therein, and it shall be no more inhabited forever. Listen, the owl is something you don't take for granted when you see it around you. I don't, I don't allow some kind of animals in my space. I remember one day I sat in, in one of our cars, and then there were a lot of ants in the car. And the drivers just made a comment. They said, oh, you know, daddy, we saw these ants in the car and we tried to spray them and they wouldn't die. I prayed against the ants. I said, I bind you, whoever sent you. No, I don't joke with any strange thing I see around me. One day I went behind our house on the trees. I saw bats. I said, bats in this house. Cut down every tree, trim every tree down and remove every bat from this house house. They say, oh no, you know, the birds, they want shade. I said, this house is not a shade for bat. This, and this bird, this, I don't even know whether to call it a bird or whatever it is. That thing is so ugly. I think it's a mama. It's so ugly. I don't know what it is doing in my house. I cut down the trees, I removed all, all the leaves and then drove them away. But you see, an owl in particular is not an animal you want to be joking with. I knew a lady and I will not describe the lady to you too well because I'm in public space and the internet and everything. She had this owl that followed her from place to place. Her father was a, an idol worshiper and the father knew about the owl. So one day her father went to visit her. This is a lady I knew personally. The father went and visited her. She was in the room. She heard the father was talking and she came out and asked the father, Daddy, what are you talking to? And the father said, you see this owl? This owl has been following you from your childhood. And anytime you go somewhere, sometimes it's another owl. But owls have been following you all your life. And that is why you have all these setbacks in life. I came to talk to the owl to stop following you. So when you came out, I was talking to the owl. You know, um, when Herod, in, in the book of, um, when Herod was giving that speech, and he sat on the throne and started giving the speech. The Bible said the angel of the Lord smote him and he fell down and died. But when the historian called Jerome wrote the story on Herod, he didn't say Herod saw an angel. Now this is historical, so we go with the biblical perspective. But I'm just telling you what Jerome wrote. Jerome said that what Herod actually saw was that Herod was sitting on the throne and he saw a rope and on that rope an owl was standing. So he interpreted it to be a bad omen. And Jerome says, as soon as he saw it, he had a pain in his stomach and worms began to come out of his stomach, crawled up to his tongue, went back and then finally he died after five days in the midst of that excruciating pain. That was Jerome's own. I, I will advise you to go by what the Bible said, that it was an angel that smote him and he died. But you know what, people? Stop taking a lot of the things you see for granted, especially when it comes to birds. And there are human beings sometimes who are dangerous like human birds. When he says where the carcass is, there the eagles will gather. The eagles over there is vultures. And there are human beings who are like vultures. They like where the carcass is. And that is why people, those of you who like to do grand funerals, you will have to be very careful. Because whenever you announce funeral, then vultures are getting ready to gather. You gather more vultures at the funeral than you gather eagles. 
But God has called us to cluster and keep company with eagles, but not with vultures. That is why Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. I pray that the next time you would hold a funeral, I pray that any vultures that come to the place, may the Lord protect you from the vultures. May the Lord protect you from the vultures. King Nebuchadnezzar, the judgment of God came upon Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar was driven into the wilderness. And the Bible said that he developed the, the feathers of a bird and the claws of an eagle. So there are human beings that are dangerous. They are like vultures. They want to see you dead and they feed on your carcass. May the Lord deliver you from dogs and from vultures and from the human sword. A baker was in the prison with a man called Joseph. And the baker had a dream and told Joseph the dream. He said, Joseph, Brother Joe, I just had a dream. And in the dream, I saw myself carrying three baskets, three white baskets. And in, on the uppermost one, there were assorted pastries. And the birds of the air were feeding on them. <laughs> Joseph says, sir, the interpretation of your dream is not good. In three days' time, Pharaoh will take you out of this prison and will cut off your head. They will hang you and the birds of the air will eat, on your, will eat your flesh. I pray, anybody under the sound of my voice, to whom they have assigned birds, evil birds. Today, Papa wrote it. Papa mentioned the scripture. He said, The snare is broken and we are escaped. I like something the Bible also said that as the swallow by flying, so the curse, causeless, shall not come to pass. I pray that any bird that has been assigned, to take your life or to take your seed. Jesus said something. He said, the sower went forth to sow and he planted seed and some of the seed fell by the wayside. And the birds of the air came and picked the seed. And he told his disciples, he said, this is the interpretation. The seed that fell by the wayside are the seed the devil the, the so, so or so but Satan so he's referring to the birds of the air as Satan and Satan is the bird of the air he says Satan came and stole and took the seed your children are your seed I said your children are your seed any satanic agent any satanic messenger any witchcraft spirit that is assigned to your family to steal your seed, to take your children, to take your family, to take your business. We rebuke the seed. Listen, Abraham made a sacrifice and he sat down to work the sacrifice. And when the birds of the air were coming to take the sacrifice, Abraham kept driving them away. Today, before I get to the next one, the next one I'll be talking about is the beast. Before I get to the beast, I want you to clap your hands and pray and drive away any bird, any evil bird that is sent to consume your seed, your children, your wife, your business, your ministry. Your ministry is your seed. Your business is your seed. Your life is your seed. Come on, pray. We drive away every bird. We strike the power of the enemy. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Come on, pray. I can hear that prayer. Rebuke the bird. Rebuke the evil bird. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Now 
Now, watch this, watch this, watch this. When your child is in the nightclub, that child has fallen by the wayside. When the child is playing the true one and it's not in school, that child has fallen by the wayside. When you are coming to church and your child chooses to go to another place, the child has fallen by the wayside. When you are giving your child the precepts of the word of God and the children feel they don't want to go your way, they are falling by the wayside. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law that him meditate day and night he is the one that shall be up like the tree planted by the rivers of water but some of our children they are not planted by the rivers of water but the reason why you are a parent is that you have a covering God told Solomon he said Solomon but for your father David I would have I would have cut you off and taken the throne from you but because of your father David I will have mercy on you a certain parent here pray because of you God will have mercy on your children rebuke the bad rebuke, rebuke the evil one in the name of Jesus and we pray right now that according to the grace of God on the life of the archbishop you are the seed of this house and because of that the enemy cannot consume you either the birds of the air cannot destroy you pray Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will challenge you to remain standing. Remain standing as I finish very soon. So he said, I will appoint over them four kinds. The sword to slay. The dogs to tear. The birds of the air or the birds of the heaven. And the beast of the field to devour and to destroy the beast. The beast. Jeremiah 12, the verse number 5. Jeremiah 12, 5. If thou hast run with footmen and they have wearied you, then how will you contend with horses? And if in the land of your peace, wherein you trust them, they have wearied thee, how shall that do in the swelling of the Jordan? Of course, you know what? Here, you are not seeing beast. But if you know background of text a little bit, you will see the beast. Jeremiah is in his hometown, and he's prophesying in his hometown. And the students of the law told him, they said, if you are standing in your hometown and you are making noise in Anatov, you go to Jerusalem and see whether you can stand the scholars who are there. They will roast you. Go to Jerusalem and see if you can stand there. But he said, the, the people you are preaching to in your hometown, they are like footmen. But the horses are in Jerusalem. Go there and preach. Another interpretation of this is that you are contending with the horsemen of some of the armies and you can't handle it. You are contending with the footmen of some of the nations and you can't handle it. What about if you start dealing with the horses of the Chaldeans? But then, it says, if in the land of your peace wherein you trust, they have worried you. How shall that do in the swelling of the Jordan? And the interpretation of this one is that in the land of your relative peace, when it's not the rainy season, when the rain is not falling, no waters are overflowing their banks, you are already tired. What are you going to do if during the harvest, the river Jordan overflows its banks and the water gets into the caves and into the thickets and the wild animals and like lions, 
come out of their hiding places and they come into the city and they, they begin to devour people and carry them away to eat them up. What are you going to do? Ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you in our generation, in the time in which we are right now, there are too many wild beasts in the system. People want money and that has turned them into wild beasts. I'm telling you, ritual murders are all over the place. Well, parents don't care to sacrifice their own children and their own wife and their own husband just to get money. I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that human beings have determined, human beings have received the, the, the instincts of brute beasts. Jude and Peter referred to some people and called them natural brute beasts. Unthinking and unreasoning people. Beast. People that can kill their own wife, kill their own husband. Just to get advantage in life. Wickedness. So Paul said to the Thessalonians, pray for us that we will be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith. Some of the human beings in our world, they are like animals. They suck blood. We are in a generation of vampires. Evil people. People who drink human blood as if they are drinking Coca-Cola or Fanta or malt. And if you are giving up now, what will you do if all these beasts come against us? I'm going to lead us to pray for just five minutes. May God raise for us today human beings that can fight beasts. I pray. May God raise a Benaiah generation. Benaiah is one of the mighty men of David. But before I get to Benaiah, one day an old prophet told a younger prophet something. He said, because you have disobeyed God on your way a lion will eat you up. And this young man on his way, a lion ate him up. He died. The lion killed him. And his dead body was lying there. And the lion was standing by the dead body. And the donkey was standing by the dead body. Watch this. Papa, the lion killed a human being and left the donkey. There are some human beings who the life of an animal like a donkey is more precious than the life of a human being. They will kill you and leave the donkeys in your family. They will kill you and leave the donkeys in the business. You know, when Saul and Jonathan died, they said the beauty of Israel is slain on the mountain. There were some people that survived. But this beauty of Israel they died on the mountain. There is a spirit today that is killing good people and leaving bad people. It is killing prophets and leaving donkeys alive. I pray, may you not die the death which a donkey should die. I pray that a lion will not destroy you and leave a donkey. Makatabalasia. Listen. There are times you go to a funeral. Okay. Family bonny chami, family bonny chami. Nipe biya enye enche nipe bi. Ba uti mi ko e yase. Uhu nipe ya ya de dan na. Na uhu nipe o mu china ne hong esua. Uhu biza uhu kwashi. This one who is dead and the ones who are mourning who should have died. The one who is dead is the breadwinner. The ones who are mourning are the bread eaters. The one who is dead is the visionary of the family. The prophet of the family. The anointed one is dead. Donkey is standing there. The lion is not eating the donkey. But the, don the lion has eaten up the prophet. I pray you will not die in place of a donkey. I declare it upon you in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hand and pray. I will not die in the place of a donkey. And I will not be used as a Christmas fowl between now and the new year. I will not die in the place of a donkey. 
I will not die and a donkey is standing there. I will not die and a donkey goes into 2024, but I couldn't enter. Come on, pray. Kill the prophet. The same lion that killed the prophet is standing there with the donkey and they are watching the dead body of the prophet. I've seen it too. The glorious human beings are dead. And the ones who are standing there and mourning, you are asking who should have died. But today, I pray, I talked about the sword. Hmm? I talked about the sword. Human beings, wicked human beings behind the sword. I talked about the dogs. Human beings who bark like dogs and behave like dogs and they are dangerous human beings. I talked about the birds and I talked about the beast. But now let me conclude by talking about Benaiah. And I pray that the spirit of Benaiah will come upon you. That spirit of Benaiah, a mighty man of David, yes, one of the mighty men of David. If that spirit comes upon you, no beast, yes, no dog, no bed, and no sword can destroy or devour you. Second King, Second Samuel, twenty-three. Second Samuel 23, verse 20. Second Samuel 23, verse 20. And Benaiah, and that word Benaiah means Jeho Yahweh builded. Yahweh has builded. Or Jehovah has built. Yahweh has builded Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a of a valiant man. So normally I tell people I'm the son of Archbishop Duncan Williams. And Archbishop Duncan Williams is the son of Ida Hosa. So although I live in Bogatanga, I am the son of a valiant man. I'm the son of a valiant man. And you are the sons and the daughters of a valiant man and a valiant woman. And the son or daughter of a valiant man, come on, shout like your voice is yours and praise God. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, son of a valiant man, of Kabzil, who had done many mighty acts. He slew two lion-like men of Moab. He slew two lion-like men of Moab. And those lion-like men of Moab, they call them in the Hebrew language, the Ariels. So, so some people believe that these two sons of, these two lion-like men are the sons of the king of Moab. Benaiah slew them. They are human beings that look like lions. Their strength was like the strength of a lion. I pray. Any unbeliever in your family, any wizard, any warlock, any diviner that looks like a lion, receive the power to slay the lion. Receive the power to slay the lion. He slew two lion-like men of Moab. Watch this. He went down also and slew a lion in the midst of a pit in the time of snow. This man, after killing two men that look like lions, went and looked for the lion itself. And there is a pit. And in the snow, your hands will be numb. And in those days, there were no gloves. The man uses his bare hands, which are numb. He enters into the pit full of snow. The, 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 the area, circumference, where he's standing with the lion is close range. And lions are stronger when the weather is cold. 
The lion has advantage over him in every way. But the man with his bare hands slew a lion in the midst of the pit. I declare right now, you are in a pit and the devil thinks he has conquered you. You are in a place of disadvantage and the devil thinks he has conquered you. But in the pit, yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil. His rod is staff. They will comfort you and God will prepare devil before you in the presence of your enemies. Come on, scream like your voice is yours. Pray. He slew the lion. And after that, verse 21, and he slew an Egyptian, a goodly man, an Egyptian who had a spear in his hand. But he went down with him, but he went down to him with a staff. So the Egyptian is holding a spear. This man goes with a staff and he plucked the spear out of the hand of the Egyptian and he slew him with his own spear. The last verse. These things did Bediah, the son of Jehoiada, and he had a name among the three mighty men. Lift up your hands. Ah, Rabasia, somebody must fight a battle your father couldn't fight. Somebody must fight a battle your father fought and got to a certain place and you must finish the battle you must continue the battle your father started somebody now now watch this watch this watch this i want you to put four things on the screen for me put four things on the screen for me put man man just write it man and put in brackets the soul dangerous human beings who look like sword. Their hand is like a sword. Papa, they can sign one signature with their hand and it is sharper than a sword. They sign it and you are finished. The sword. But I want you to put man. Four kinds of destroyers. Number one, man. Human being. When we were young, they used to say, Sroni Banaja is Hamai. Behind the throat of the right, fear man. Oh, it's keeping long. Let me continue. Man into brackets, the sword. Number two, dogs. Number three, fowls. But the fowls over here is birds. Sometimes I try to clarify it because I went to a place and when I said fowls of the air, somebody thought I was talking about akuko. But please, the fowl here is not a cuckoo. It is birds in general. Okay? So, man, into brackets, so. Then dogs. Then birds. And then beasts. Anything that is behaving like this, you have master over them. When God created Adam and Eve and he said, I give you dominion over the birds of the air and I give you dominion over the fish of the sea and so on and so forth. He said, and the moon and the stars and everything like that. He was not just talking about the physical domain. He was talking also about the spiritual domain. I pray for somebody right now. Lift up your voice and pray. Conquer the four. Conquer the four. We have failed to get them on the screen, but somebody conquered the four. You should remember them. I gave you all the four. I gave you man into brackets, the sword, and I gave you the dogs, and I gave you the beast, and I gave you the fowls of the air. Come on, pray. You are praying for three minutes. Go ahead and pray. Oh, this is hope. The moment when God, every case, every case is on the line. This is hope.
prayer is going, going on, you thank God you are not a devil. Too much. Ezekiel 40. The glory of the Father. Verse 20 to 21. Leave this one. Can you give me just a scripture? Just only, only this. Though Noah, Daniel, or Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own soul by their righteousness. This is a dangerous period where God is saying, even if Daniel and Noah were standing here, they can't say, for thou saith the Lord, how much more when I send my four sore judgments upon Jerusalem. Four sore judgments upon Jerusalem. The sword, the famine, the noisome beast, and the pestilence to cut off from it man and beast. Verse 22. For behold, therein shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth, both sons and daughters. Behold, they shall come forth unto you, and you shall see their way and their doings. And you shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem. Even concerning all that I have brought upon her. I want you to pray the last prayer. The last prayer. You want to receive the anointing to be a master destroyer of evil. The Bible said, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. I remember a woman told me something in Bogatanga, and she's a Muslim. I will never forget that those words. She's the mother-in-law of Abedipele. Abedipele's mother-in-law. Abedipele's mother-in-law. She told me something I'll never forget. She came to her house. She's a Muslim. But she's my mother. She came to me. She said, My son. You have conquered the evil in this town. He said, she said, you have been tested and you stood. And you have conquered the evil in the town. I pray for somebody. You will conquer the evil in your family. There is a place in my village. We are building something in the village. And Pastor William, no pictures, please. No pictures. We are doing something in my village. And we wanted more land. So we went to an old man and said we wanted more land. He said, go and tell your father, the pastor. This land is there. Somebody at two sons, two men, tried to build and they died. Their father tried and he died. So tell your pastor, if he wants the land, he can come for it. In other words, if your, your pastor wants to die, he should come. But then the man made a statement. He said, you see that thing your father is building up there? Because of what he's building, our children now have the boldness to start building in this part of the village. Listen, you are a master over demons. You have the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by enemies at you. Can you lift up your hand and pray for three minutes? Uninterrupted. I don't know what is in your family, but kill it, destroy it, pull it down. 
The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Come on, pray. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, lift up those hands. Eternal Father, I pray right now. I pray right now. Lift up your hand, I pray right now. You know, people, there have been many times when somebody died and we all know it could have been prevented but there was some last minute prayer which was not prayed for the person and the person passed a thief on the cross knew that that was his last day he said when you go to paradise remember me and Jesus said today you will be with me in paradise I want everybody to lift up your hand I'm telling you, there are people standing in this building, Papa, who for some reason are afraid that they will not cross the first. Some of them have dreamt about it. They know it. Papa stood here in the morning was talking about 31st, 31st, 31st. I'm like, what is it about 31st? There is something in the womb of 31st. And we must cause 31st December to commit an abortion. It must abort any plan it has concerning you. Anybody standing here who has a great fear, either because of a dream or a prophecy somebody gave you, or you yourself, you just feel it that you will not cross the first. And the assignment of the enemy against you is so strong. I want you to don't be shy of anybody. Just come to me here. Just come to me here. Just come to me here. Come to me here. I'm taking only five minutes to execute this commission because I don't want Papa to be in the house and I'm standing here indefinitely. Somebody give me some anointing oil to put on your head. Psalm 79, verse 11. Psalm 79, verse 11. Psalm 79, verse 11. Let the sign of the prisoner come before thee according to the greatness of thy power. Preserve thou those that are appointed to die. Lift up your hands. Oh, Jesus. Ah, take it. Oh, just follow my hands. Divine escapes. Ah. Put your hands together. Command divine escapes. Somebody pray. Oh! Take it. Even the devil can smell the oil. Oh! Oh, shall stop them from coming. Stop them from coming. Stop them from coming. Stop the line where it is. Oh! Ah. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, somebody pray. Command, divine escape. Somebody pray. Escapes. Pray. Oh, pray. I shall stop anybody from coming to me. And let them pray. The ones I'm laying hands on are the point of contact with the rest of you. Pray. Zonima Kabataya, you will not die, you will live to declare the works of God. We disappoint every appointment, we annul every assignment in the name of Jesus. Oh, oh, when the glory comes. There'll be no words to say. Oh, oh, oh. When the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. 
tell you this before you sit down. Every human being in this world is a zoo. Don't ever forget this. Every human being is a zoo. There is an animal in every human being. Just like there are bacteria and virus in every human being. Some of the human beings are zoo. And we and it you as for Herod, there was a fox in him. I don't know what zoo you are. Some to maybe there are pigeons and doves in them. Every human being is a zoo. <laughs> Some of them, there are serpents in them. The person is a snake. So Jesus said, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And you know, some of these serpents and scorpions are human beings. Bishop, I have come to see that every human being is a zoo. Some of the human beings have got seven animals in them. Some have three, some have four, some have one. Otherwise, how can human beings be referred to by Peter and Jude as natural brute beast? And when Paul said, I have fought the beast of Ephesus, he was not talking about, the, like some people believe that Paul was take, taken and thrown into an arena to fight with lions. The man was a Roman citizen. They won't do that to him. He was talking about people with strange doctrines who attacked him at the least excuse. I pray. Oh, Jesus. Any dog, any human being with a sword, any fowl of the air, any beast, May you become a master. Dominate over them. Rule over them. In the name of Jesus. Clap your hands. You may be seated. I take full possession.